Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Yesterday we got to see the culmination of the SN11 Starship test campaign and, well, it didn't go according to plan. Not even for the observers because it was incredibly foggy and we basically didn't see anything. We did have the official SpaceX feed but that kept on cutting out quite a bit. Uh, yeah, so I mean, we heard the vehicle go up, we saw some video from on board, it got high around 420, ha ha ha. Uh, we actually get a quick snapshot from inside the uh, propellant tank. This is the methane tank and you can see like the anti-slosh baffles along the side. There's a big pipe which is the downcomer from the uh, LOX header tank. And you can actually see underneath it the spherical... Um, header tank which is used for the the methane but yeah um vehicle comes back down we see an engine relight and then we lose telemetry and everybody else watching with their big cameras on site see an orange flag through the fog and some other tank watchers who had cameras set up very close to the launch site start to see debris falling down around them in fact several cameras were knocked offline or knocked around uh, there was one obvious piece that I saw on the NASA spaceflight camera which was very clearly a section of the skirt with a landing leg still attached. So, of course, um, yeah, I slept through all this and I woke up so I didn't even get the dressing gown on. In fact, I should be wearing it now, right, for this. But yeah, there's not much data to go on. I mean, seriously, I don't know what what we can try to get from this. I was joking that maybe we could get everyone's audio feeds and try to do like, uh, you know, trilateration to figure out the altitude or whatever that's going on. But yeah, that would wait until I have enough spare time, which will be never. So we did get a little report from Elon who said that there was one engine which did not reach proper chamber pressure during the relight. Um, but with the three engine relight, that shouldn't have been needed. And yes, an RUD happened a few seconds later. Now, on the onboard camera, we actually see one engine light and then the feed stops. But that doesn't mean that only one engine lit because there is a lag between the engine firing and the telemetry and video actually getting back and being decoded. The best data we actually have is from photographs of the debris swarm uh, laid out all over the place. And, Shoulders, head and shoulders above everyone else is RGV uh, aerial photography who run their Patreon and I, I of course signed up because I wanted to see this site from above and you can see a very large debris field. Now most notably if you look close to the landing pad there's three pieces of debris that are kind of um, uh, they're very important markers to Starship RUDs. There's the nose cone. The nose cone has the flaps on it and it has the header tank in it and more importantly it's not pressurized so when the rest of the tanks fail it tends to remain in one piece and that's seen pretty close to the pad to the the northwest um, there is the raptors which are over to the west of the pad those are sort of still very close together indicating that they probably landed together and I also think I see the header tank on the, the you know, fuel header tank on the west side. Now, these three things are important because they're big and heavy. And so they probably didn't get pushed far away from where the initial explosion was. They probably just fell straight down. Now, the rest of the debris field goes off like 500 meters, half a kilometer roughly in uh, to the north and to the west a little, but almost none to the south. This is a very odd you know, dispersion pattern. I'm not sure what triggered it, but when you look at the debris, it's all in very, very small pieces, It's which is, is kind of odd, right? There's a few sec recognizable sections of the tank, but there's not like a big giant main tank section that we, we saw with some other RUDs. So how could this happen? Well, I have a problem figuring this out because if you imagine that the problem is with the Raptors. And during ignition, we have some catastrophic failure on those engines and they explode. Well, logically that would affect the bottom of the thrust puck, which might damage the bottom of the oxygen bulkhead. And we've seen failures of that oxygen bulkhead before. We saw that on SN1, if you remember, and we saw that on SN10. And in both those cases, 
what happens is the propellant in there just gets squished out by the pressure and the vehicle moves upwards. In the case of SN10, the, uh, the methane bulkhead failed moments afterwards and the whole thing took off. But importantly, the tank just sort of squishes down and is pretty much intact until it hit the ground. And so that's not what happened here because we actually see the debris spread out. That means the tank actually exploded all the way up the side. And like when, when you have a pressure failure on a tank, it sort of tends to start with a crack and then that crack will propagate and spread out. But it's sort of limited by how far it can proceed because as it starts to crack, pressure starts to drop. So you don't often, you don't, I don't, I don't tend to see tanks like this that uh, break up into so many small pieces from just a pressure failure. I mean, it does happen. It's not like it's not unknown, but given the history we've seen with the the starships, you know, the ones that have shattered into lots of pieces have been they've hit the ground and then shattered, right? Uh, and that's where you've got load being applied to them in various ways. So this looks to me like the tanks were like exploded from the inside. Now, I, I, if I'd looked at this, I would have said, well, that really looks like the flight termination system was triggered, you know, intentionally trying to break the thing up into lots of pieces. But there are plenty of sources who are familiar with individuals at SpaceX who assure me and assure the world that flight termination system was not triggered. Now, this does have an automatic flight termination system. Maybe it happened before telemetry. I, I don't know. I, I think they would know. So I'm going to trust them that the FTS didn't fire. But maybe there'll be some clues that show otherwise. So then that leaves a possible explosion inside the tanks. That something starts to happen moments after ignition. Maybe during the flight there was some mixing of methane and liquid oxygen. And during the relight... Something happened that then caused them to uh, combustion to happen, and then you basically have a very rapid pressure increase inside the tanks, and that causes your mixing and can, of course, cause the tanks to be torn apart uh, very, very quickly into small pieces. I, and I, that's what I'm thinking, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. It is a conundrum to be sure, and um, I'm not sure we'll ever know it. it, it SN11, boy, uh, that was a that's an interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's debris everywhere. Now there is a piece of debris that was found a couple of miles to the north, uh, and that's a very light play, a lightweight piece of insulation that must have fallen off when they were at altitude and sort of blown down that way. Um, also, by the way, the event was big enough to show up on weather radar, and we see it uh, just you know floating off into the distance. So yeah. We know that it must have exploded in flight, right? It couldn't have hit the ground and exploded further. Um, we know that the tank came apart in multiple pieces. It was pretty energetic. Um, we're told that the flight termination system didn't happen. Okay, so next things to look forward to is that, well, Booster 1 has been given some small tests, but it sounds like they're already thinking about when they're going to you know, dismantle it because they really don't have a test stand ready for it. And the next uh, prototype that is up is serial number 15. And serial number 15 is big redesign. It's going to look pretty similar on the outside for sure. But internally, they've done a lot of reworking, a lot of uh, changes to various pieces of hardware. It's all super secret, but we're told it's the new secret sauce and this one will work for sure. It also is going to feature a new generation of Raptor engines. Uh, because, well, there's, of course, been concerns about uh, how reliable the Raptors are, given that they have to... They're very complicated engines. And we all know that you know, Elon famously said that uh, the best part is no part. He dislikes complexity, and yet the Raptors are the most complicated rocket engines ever built. Um, but that is in the name of reliability and reusability. So anyway, new generation of Raptors may solve a number of problems we're seeing, but... Boy, that, that, I don't know, this feels like a real setback. Now, I guess I'm off to make a Dear Moon video, hoping that I'll fly around the moon in one of these things someday. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.